Oh, excuse me. Thanks, it's on. Thank you, Chair Murray, and thank you, Ranking Member Cassidy. And I really want to thank the witnesses here today for your uh, thoughtfulness and your caring on behalf of the children, the families, everybody who works in the school and the community. Really appreciate that. I want to build a little bit on what Senator Smith was talking about in student mental health because uh, we are in the midst of a youth mental health crisis. It's only been made worse by, worse by the pandemic. We know how hard distance learning was for everyone, uh, particularly difficult for students with mental health challenges. They lost access to their friends, to their teachers, and to, if they were available, any in-school mental health resources they may have previously relied on for support. Uh, tragically, in Nevada's Clark County School District, the number of students who died by suicide in 2020 uh, more than doubled from the year before. Um, tragically. And so we have to do more to help. So uh, along with Senator Cassidy, we are working on bipartisan legislation that would reauthorize and enhance a federal program to train teachers, school staff, and other personnel to better recognize the symptoms of youth mental illness or mental health issues before they escalate, referring students and their family members to appropriate community-based mental health services. And I've also introduced bipartisan legislation with Senator Murkowski to expand SAMHSA grants for comprehensive student mental health promotion and suicide prevention to K-12 school districts. This money is currently only available to colleges and universities. So I just wanted to uh, build on that. Uh, you answered our, my questions already. So. The next thing I want to move to is uh, the learning loss. We had a lot of learning loss. It highlighted our educational inequities, uh, face our students in low-income rural communities, as Senator uh, Casey mentions, our student, uh, students with disabilities. And so we have to focus on eliminating that educational deficit as quickly as possible. I know in Nevada, across the country, educators are working to uh, move forward and uh, overcome any of those setbacks. So um, Dr. Goldhaber, as we prepare for the next school year this fall, how do we bridge the gap for those students who face the most inequities and challenges, particularly our low income minority, our rural students, and, and as Senator Casey highlighted, uh, you'd have re react, uh, responded to our disab disability community. Well, I, I, again, I think that the one of the things that's really important is that we do a good job of figuring out which students really need which kinds of help and tailoring the, um, the interventions to really target those students and target the kinds of help that they, that they need. Um, and I think that the, the school systems, at least that we're working with, we're seeing that kind of targeting and a lot of the, the kinds of investments that one would expect and hope for, again, tutoring programs, um, extra support in in you know core academic uh, subjects and and you know summer school, um, but I guess I want to take this moment to just sort of emphasize um, something that was said earlier, which is that um, systems received very different amounts of money, and there are some estimates out there about whether it is going to be enough. And m my take is that it's going to be enough. Um, the ESSER funds are going to be sufficient. Um, to help students in lots of school systems, but not all school systems. So I think that we need to look at this as not a short run, we're going to get over the hump in a year, but in some cases a, a longer term endeavor and make sure that we're keeping our eye on the ball of student achievement when hopefully the pandemic has, has faded in the rear view mirror, um, but that it may not have fully faded in terms of learning loss for, for some students so that in the out years we're continuing to provide, provide support for those students that really need it. Well, thank you. I want to build on that in the short time we have left because uh, we can't do all of this without addressing the teacher shortage, uh, especially in specialized subject areas such as career and technical education in Nevada. We're hearing that we have about 1,500 CTE educator positions currently unfilled due to insufficient resources. So um, again, Dr. Goldhaber, what does the initial data tell us regarding which subjects are most at risk in terms of teacher recruitment and retention? And we can build up mental health services and other wraparound services, but we need educators in the classroom. So uh, um, what do you think we need to do to help there? Uh, I think I think the just very quickly, there are th three, four areas. So you mentioned CTE, um, special education, 
um, STEM areas and ELL are all areas where the staffing challenge seems um, much more acute relative to teachers at the elementary education level. And what's important is that it is acute for different reasons. So in the case of special education, there is higher than average attrition of special education teachers. But for instance, in the case of STEM teachers, it looks like there's an issue with the, the number of people who are being trained and entering the workforce. So I guess I would just sort of push us toward um, tailored solutions that really get at the nature of the problem. And ultimately, I think that we need to have have school systems send stronger signals to the teacher labor market and prospective teachers about the areas where there are real shortages and challenges in getting classroom staffed. Thank you, Madam Chair. Senator Castillo. 